best stories in sports. This is an E60 feature presentation. Moments ago, these were Steve Smith's shoes. He left them behind on this field, not because he forgot something, but because he remembered something, that millions around the world have no shoes to wear. The shoes are, are the simplest part. The volunteers is the hard part. The hands and feet, making that happen. If only everything in Steve Smith's turbulent past could be as easily left behind as those shoes. He hasn't always been in the position that he's in right now. What Steve Smith of the Carolina Panthers is now. Steve Smith, touchdown! Steve Smith breaks free! Caught by Steve Smith, Steve Smith! All the way to Peter! A five-time Pro Bowler, still speedy at 33 in his 12th season. At five foot nine, he is one of the most aggressive wide receivers in the NFL. Who wants it more when the ball is in the air? Steve Smith does. The fight that he has inside, and if I could use a, word, a couple of words, it would be competitive arrogance. And I mean that in the greatest sense. If you see this face, that means I score. If Steve Smith was mild-mannered, we, you know, we wouldn't be sitting here talking about it. I mean, that's part of his game, and that's the way he is. But that intensity gone terribly wrong has earned Steve Smith a reputation. Three times, the last in 2008, he has assaulted his own teammates. In the years since, Smith feels so much about his life has changed. Being fired up is a lot different than playing angry like I used to play, being angry, being upset, um, looking for things, looking for uh, altercations. What sort of behavior triggers his emotions sometimes? Oh, I have no idea. You would have to ask him. <laughs> you asked him that question. The answer begins in South Central Los Angeles, where as an undersized grade schooler, Steve Smith would dream of being a receiver in the NFL. As he ran through rose bushes, hands outstretched, like he was running through a free game gauntlet. I would say I was probably about 10 or 11. Uh, I was a little bit shorter than what I am now. In my mind, I was fixated. If I, if I can do that, then I made it. He attended McKinley Elementary School, where a childhood fight would shape Steve Smith's outlook. It was the first and last time I got a black eye. I cowered down that day. Did it ever happen again? No. But it's not, it's not something I'm proud of, though. I got home, uh, and my mom was like, if you get your butt whooped, I'm going to whoop your butt. And, uh, and I just kind of changed my attitude about it. Uh, and so and I was kind of, you know, just became real aggressive. Allow people to rightfully so uh, label me as a hothead. He honed his quickness thanks to a neighbor's really big dog. He had a domer pitcher named Tootsie. And uh, their, their fence was probably about this high. She hopped the fence and chased me. And it got about, got about to the green fence. And I realized this wasn't working out. I took off running. And I looked up, Tussie was right here walking back, and I was still running. Uh, and so uh, I got a lot of practice and working on my speed there. A lot of cornerbacks in the NFL <laughs> wish that you had never met Tootsie. Yeah. <laughs> he would catch his earliest passes here, in the yard of his grandparents' home. His grandfather would be a role model, married for 60 years, a man of few words, who always had time for his grandson. When he passed, we found out he had cancer, and he said nothing to anybody. What does that tell you about the kind of man he was? Uh, 
if I can be a per small percentage, you know, now I'll, I'll be honored. You lived long enough to see you achieve all of your dreams. Yeah. What and does that I, mean? It was great. He always, uh, he's always told me uh, how proud of, of, of me he was. There would be a great deal to be proud of after being drafted out of Utah in the third round back in 2001. By his third season, Smith would transform the franchise with this catch and run in overtime against the Rams. Touchdown! Woo! Touchdown, Steve Smith! Setting them on the road that would lead to Super Bowl 38, where they would lose to the Patriots. Then, in 2005, leading the NFL in catches, yards, and touchdowns. A receiver's triple crown. Big plays! My big plays! And big game! There would be pride to be taken in his life off the field, too. Married since 2000 to his wife, Angie, with three children, sons Peyton and Boston, and daughter Bailey. He's intense. <laughs> He's not always maybe as intense as he, as he is on the field, but um, he's intense just in life. He's very passionate. You know, at home, he's safe. He can be himself and relax. He would be anyone's NFL success story, except for the fights with his teammates. The first with receiver Julian Gary in 2002 in a training camp dormitory days of rage summoned up just by the names of his three victims. I have to ask you, Julian Gary, Anthony Bright, Ken Lucas, what happened? Julian Gary, uh, I had a great opportunity to talk to him uh, this summer. What did you want him to know? I'm sorry. Saying I'm sorry is actually, uh, it's a relief. I don't think enough people say it. His 2003 fight with teammate Anthony Bright during a film session sent one man to the hospital with a broken nose and facial fractures, and the other, briefly, to a jail cell. A settlement prevents Smith from talking about it. What happened with Ken Lucas? It's documented. People know. I want to hear from you. Mistakes are mistakes. By 2008, his troubles seemed over. He'd been made a captain. When, in training camp, Steve Smith's fists broke cornerback Ken Lucas's nose. What did you do? Why did it happen? Do you know? and don't want to tell me? How come? Happened because uh, I allow myself to lose control. That's why. What were the feelings of remorse like for you after that happened? Well, one of the feelings was how do I explain to my wife when I drive home when we're supposed to go to the doctor because this check is says she had cervical cancer, how selfish I was. So for me, the night before, thinking about that, it was the same night my mom called me and told me uh, she was diagnosed with diabetes. The burden that was on a 20-whatever-year-old kid trying to figure out life himself. 
So when everything happened between me and Ken, I allowed the pressure to get to me and I reacted. And that's what happened. His wife, Angie, did not have cancer. Doctors continue to monitor her condition. His mother has been managing her diabetes and Ken Lucas before their team and the NFL would forgive Steve Smith. There were some guys on that team that forgave me. There were some guys till this day that don't. Are you still that person who did those things? It's not for me to say. If you ask any man who trusts his own heart, he's a fool. For me, I, I don't walk in, I, I try not to walk in my past anymore and try to uh, work in redemption and, and, and in that level. Four years have passed without incident. This summer, back in Los Angeles, the hands that once reached out for rose bushes now reach out to those in need. Here on LA's Skid Row, where Smith's commitment to Samaritan's Feet, a faith-based charity, finds him on that path of redemption. Let me hook you up a little bit. Washing the feet of the poor. I think it's the most humbling thing you can do is to serve and wash the feet of a complete stranger. Making them first and you becoming last. That's what it's about. Is there anything you want me to pray for you about? He gives away shoes at each event. Yeah, near 12 and a half. And after each game, he leaves these shoes behind, hoping to change lives. Just as he says, his life changed. He's grown a lot over the years, but he's grown spiritually, he's grown emotionally, um, and he's got such a big heart. You have a new peace in your life. Not new peace. Peace. I've never had peace in my life.